This is a simple application taken up uh, from Varian Workbook. Have a look at this. Suppose your maths teacher takes two tests. Your score in these tests are x1 and x2. And the worst of these two tests will count as a final score. will count as a final score, right? So, draw the indifference curve. Draw the indifference curve, right? Uh, suppose x1 is the score in test one and x2 is the score in test two. And uh, suppose you score, <clears throat> Suppose you score four in test one. So I'm just taking up uh, one example. Uh, then you need at least four in test two so that your, your score would be at least four. You can't perform less than four. You can't perform worse than four in your test two. Otherwise, that will be count. That will be counted as your score, right? Then your score in test two should be four and above, right? Or you can say at least four. In case if it is not so, then your final score is going to go down. Otherwise, your final score will fall, right? So let's say you're saying X1 is four. And uh, if X2 is also four, then the final score is minimum of X1, X2, whatever it is. So it is four, right? X1 is four x2 is 5. Then again, your score is 4. x2 is 4. And you have performed less than or worse than your earlier test, your score is going to fall. You do not want that to happen. Right? Uh, you do not want that to happen. Similarly, see, in the paper or in the test, you do not have to write this much. But the point is when you're doing it for the first time, so you should write as much as intuition as you can so that your intuition develops. Similarly, if you score four in test two,
than your score. Should be at least four, right? So the point which I want to say is this. So if X2 is four, if X1 is four, it doesn't matter. So the final score is, final score is U of min X1, X2, na? Mm. Just wait. Here also your final score should be u is equal to min of x1, x2. So if you score 4 in, in test 2, then your score in test 1 should be better than this. So uh, this individual, uh, this individual, this individual means this professor, he wants to perform, he wants you to perform better in every paper, right? So, uh, otherwise, in case if I would have taken up the max score, then you could actually relax in the another paper, no? So, we are saying, let's say my utility, my score in test one is let's say four score in test two is let's say four like this uh, so if i am getting four in both the test my my final score is four only if i am getting four in uh this guy i can show i should rather write that x1 this is easier for me to think although there is no difference if i am scoring 4 in test 1 and if i score let's say 5 in test 2 then also my score is 4 uh, if i score 4 in test 1 and 6 in test 2 then also my score is same 4 i score 4 in test 2 but 5 in test 1 uh, 5 in test 1. Then also professor is taking up the minimum of 2 scores. 4 in test 2 and uh, let's say 6 in test 1. So then also the score is same. So the idea which I want to put in your head is that for these kind of preferences when your utility function is given by u is equal to min of xy you have the L shape kind of preferences. Hmm. You have L-shaped kind of preferences, you no? Know? And so, if I want my score to increase, I have to increase score, right? The minimum score on both of them, right? So I was sitting at four. So this is 4-4. Four, four. If I want my score to increase to 5, I do not have to increase 5 only in one of the tests. I should be getting at least 5 in both the tests. I should be getting at least 5 in both the tests. Then only my utility is going to increase. Are you with me? Huh? You with me, Vita? So my preferences are given by this such indifference groups. My preferences are given by such indifference groups. And if I ask you that uh, are these preferences convex? Or if I ask you is the weekly preferred set convex? So for this, uh, the utility is 5. So weekly preferred set is what, beta? For this indifference curve, the weekly preferred set is going to be like this. This entire thing. 
is going to be the weekly preferred set. Huh? And is this set convex? You pick up any two bundles in this set and you join them at the line segment. So I picked up any two bundles, A and B. And this line AB is lying within the set. Not only this, any point C, D, you join them with the line segment, this lie within the weekly preferred set. So you can easily say that the weekly preferred set is a convex set. Weekly preferred set is a convex set. Now, if I would have changed this and I would have said that suppose you're taking up an economics class and there the teacher is asking, there the teacher is uh, uh, is very friendly and teacher says, okay, I'll count the best of the two scores. Then what will happen? Uh, I'll count the best of the two scores. So suppose... Your economics professor takes the best of the two scores. as a final count. Draw your preferences, draw your indifference score. Draw your indifference curve in this case. Uh, suppose X1 is the score in test one, X2 is the score in test two. Uh, and if I score four in test one, let's say, so I'll just try to copy something suppose you score four in test one then your score in test two should be what huh. you're talking about the maximum of two scores huh. Huh. Suppose you score four in test one, then your score in test two could be can be uh, what x two belonging to zero to four. Because if you score four in test one and zero in test two, then also your score is four, the maximum of two. If you score four in test one and one in test two, then also the professor is going to take up your score as four, the best of the two scores and so on and so forth, right? Uh, so, So, I score 4 in test 1, one in 0 in test 2. Professor is going to take up my score as 4. I score 4 in test 1, 1 in test 2. This is 1 now. 1, 2, 3, 4. At all of these points, what is happening is, that professor is taking up my best score, right? So this is, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, suppose you score uh, four in test two. And your score in test one could be anything between zero to four. So if I've scored four in test one, beta, 
of test two. And I scored zero in test one. So professor will say, okay, fine. Zero, four. The best is four. Professor will take four. I scored four in test two, but I scored one in test one. Professor will say one, four. Which one is higher? Four. Professor will take four. And so on and so forth. Right? So the idea is that this is going to be your indifference curve. Okay? And if you want to increase your performance, uh, if you want to increase your performance, then even if you increase your performance in even in just one of the tests, your performance is going to increase, right? So supposedly if I score now five in test one, I score five in test one and zero in test two, my score is five. I score five in test one, one in test two, my score is five and so on and so forth. So by the same logic, you can say that my Indifference curve will look like this. So, what is my preferred set, beta? This region above than this this region, beta. Uh huh. This region is the preferred set. So, is this the uh, convex set? Is this weakly preferred set convex? So, you take up these two points. So, this is lying within the set. Is this convex? This line is lying within the set. This line may be lying, but do you think that this line is lying within the set completely? These two points A and B are on the weakly preferred set. Yes. You join them by the line segment. Then is the line segment lying completely within the set? No. So weakly preferred set is not convex. Okay, so we have also recorded uh, the complete playlist for micro. Uh, I'll be putting that in the description box. Have a look at that. Maybe they are a little helpful to you. Thank you, Veda. This is what I wanted to do in this case.